Before we get started, make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons, and be sure to check back regularly so you don't miss out. If you were to ask 10 Christians their belief, you would get 10 different answers. How does that sound? I mean, I don't know. I feel like at the end of the day, yeah. it all aligns in the same way. That Jesus, they all believe that Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. Uh, so they all believe that. So I feel like it's just different perceptions. I think that that's, that's the main point that makes someone a Christian, that they believe Jesus was the Messiah yeah. and he died on the cross for the sins of mankind. Yeah. But I, when you come to the point of um, who was Jesus, some say he was God, some say he was uh, part of the Trinity, some say he was the Son of God, but he wasn't God. So I, I find that they differ on these points. Why do you think that is? Like, it shouldn't, shouldn't, like, there's a verse in Quran, it's uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 256. It says, La It says that there is no compulsion in religion. As in, no one can force you to believe in something and no one can stop you from believing in something. So there's no compulsion. But the truth is clear from error. Shouldn't the truth be something which is clear? Clear in terms of that the human intellect can understand it, that the human heart doesn't have any uh, shaking or confusion about it. And also the text itself, the text, if it's sent from God, should it not make it clear? Like the, the most important thing would be who is God and what is the identity of God? Do you not find that strange that Christianity, there's so much difference on is Jesus God, is he not God, is God one only, or is he a trinity, etc. Do you not find that this is strange, that the, it's um, so... Not really, because it's like, the way I see it as, it's like, some people can take something that is true and then rewrite it, twist it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, at the end of the day, I feel like, in a way, like most Christians do believe that, oh yeah, like the basis of Christianity, everyone agrees with it, but then yeah. it's about the way people go about it, like for example, when they talk about like, with Jesus Christ, for example, the situation, right? Yeah. There are certain things where people will take their own interpretations, I feel like that's their own yeah, yeah. way. So like, it's kind of like the way like some people like now, like anything can be true, right? And then some people like twist it, or people can like change it into their own interpretation. Uh -huh. So I feel like at the end of the day, people have their own interpretation, but at the end of the day, it's best to go with what the book says. And what I've read from the book, yeah. the things I've said before, it's what's in the book. Okay. So I feel like at the end of the day, I'll look at the book for anything. If, if someone's telling me something different, I'll go and look at what the book says. So it's all about that. So I, I think the verse you're referring to, if, correct me if I'm wrong, is the Gospel according to John, verse, uh, se sorry, chapter 17, verse 3, where it says that this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who you have sent. Yeah, like that. So this verse for us would be very clear that God is one, yeah. Jesus worshipped one God, yeah. he called towards one God, yeah. but Jesus was a messenger sent by God. Can I, let me mention something in Quran. Uh, the Quran, we believe, is the, the word of God sent down on the last messenger, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And, and we believe it's the word of God. It's not the word of men, it's not the word of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, there's 114 chapters of various sizes. But the chapter 112 is known as uh, Surah. Surah means chapter, Surah to Ikhlas. Ikhlas means sincerity and purity. So it's four verses. But this chapter explains God. The first verse, Qul. So it's, Qul means say, it's commanded. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been commanded by Allah to announce this to the people. Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say Allah, He is one. He is alone. He is one. Second verse, Allahu samad. But He is as samad. As samad is from the names of Allah. As samad it means that everything is in need of Him and he is completely independent, self-sufficient from his creation. The third verse, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He's not born, and none is born from him. Wa lam yukullahu kufu wa ahad. And there's nothing comparable to him. So the, these four verses, this is what we say is describing God. That he is one, everything is in need of him, and he is self-sufficient. He is not born, and none is born from him and there's nothing comparable to him. 
how does this sound? Do you, do, does this, I mean, is this clear? It's similar to what um, yeah. it says in the Bible as well. Yes. There is no other God. Don't worship any other God but yeah. God. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's similar. Um, um, it's pretty much the same. Like yeah, because we, we're saying that the, the message of Abraham, of Noah, of Moses, of Jesus yeah. and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, has yeah. to be the same. We, we don't believe that one messenger came with Judaism, one messenger came with Christianity and one messenger came with another religion, Islam. We believe they all came with Islam. Islam meaning submission, submit yourself to God. But the, the reason why I mentioned this chapter, can this chapter be misunderstood or misinterpreted? Say Allah, He is one. So I would say that this makes it very clear. But also this would show that Jesus is not God. And that the Trinity was not something which Jesus or Moses or Abraham called to. How does that sound? I mean, I see the point. I see the point. It's, it's something still that I'm learning about. No problem, no problem. So it's like, I hear it. And it's not something that I'm neglecting or anything. Because I like to yeah. learn about yeah. you know, things like that. But yeah, like with my understanding of the Trinity, even from what the book says, it's pretty clear that it shows that Jesus Christ and God, the Father of God, has, you know, got the the being that He was sent here on earth to die for our sins and uh -huh. cleanse the sins of human beings. So, uh -huh. so then, yeah, that's my understanding of it. And obviously, like I've spoken to people about it. Showing them Bible verses that shows this as well. So uh -huh. again, it's in the Bible too. So they yeah, yeah, it. it's there. It's I there. Feel like um, in a way that um, like certain people take things as like um, you know the verse in the Bible where it says um, whoever has seen me or spoke to me has, has seen, seen the Father. Father basically. Yeah. Right. So some people will interpret that as oh yeah, that means Jesus Christ is God the Father, right? But it's not really. That's not really I, what I would say it is, and what uh, a lot of people think it is. Like, I feel like, for example, right? Um, let's say that child and their dad, right? Yeah. Let's say, like, as a child grows up and everything, that like, you see the child, right? Like, yeah. You, see, you can see the dad. The mannerisms, the, child, the behavior. The mannerisms yeah, the yeah. Behavior. So that's what I feel like it's basically saying. You know? Okay. So it's not really saying that. Oh yeah. But that, saying. but that would still mean that yeah. Jesus, a human being, is compar is comparable to the Creator. No, not really, because. It, in a way, in the Bible, it talks to us about like how Jesus is the Son of God. Uh -huh. So then, in a way, like it's not really comparing. It's basically showing that. Like, the God but what does what does Son mean? Son. Because you know, blessed are the peacemakers, yeah. for they should be called the sons of God. Yeah. Adam is called the son of God. Yeah. The children of Israel are called the sons son of God. Yeah. So do you make a distinction between those sons yeah. and Jesus being the Son? Do you make a distinction? Yeah, because before even Adam and Eve, and yeah. all that, like yeah. Jesus was there, uh -huh. you know, before all of them. So then Jesus was kind of like the Word. Uh -huh. So in the Bible it says that in the beginning, um, when Jesus in the beginning was the Word, was the and the Word was with God, God and yeah. the Word was God, the word. and the Word became flesh. Yeah. So then the yeah. flesh is God, basically Jesus in God's flesh, as in like He is the Son of God. But people, but, but Christians use that verse to say that Jesus is God. I don't really think that that's uh -huh. what it means though. I don't really think that's what it means. Because at the end of the day, you I know, don't think it, more, yeah. there's many more verses in the Bible yeah. that Jesus talks about yeah. that points to Jesus not being God the Father. Do you know uh -huh. what I mean? Yeah. He's, like, he to, himself had a God. Yeah, he himself had a God and he prayed. So it's like, I can't, for example, I well, can't. Well, Christians, you know how they respond. Huh? Trinitarian Christians respond by saying, because Jesus was fully God mm -hmm. and fully man at the same time. Yeah. Which we say we say is yeah. falsehood. Yeah. Is illogical. Because I have a lot. Of, I have known some people that are Trinitarians, and I have. There's another in the Christian community called. Um, it's a uni, uni, Unitarians, yeah. yeah Unitarians. Unitarians, and then. Unitarians, we find them closer to Islam. Yeah, that's what every, that's what the Muslim people say as well. But in Unitarians, they still believe that Jesus had divine attributes, or he was divine, but of lesser degree than the Father, which that's we which like we. Look at the here. Oh. Look at the, put them here. But um, there's two things I'd like to mention. One is about the issue of um, the necessity of someone having to die for our sins. That's one point. But before that, have you ever looked into the authenticity and reliability of the Bible? Oh uh, yeah, I have researched that. I've had many different. Um, okay. Reasons. 
And how, how, what do you say? Do you, do you think the Bible is authentic, reliable? Yeah, I think it's reliable. Because, because you're building your, your foundation on it. Yeah, because I, I know it's reliable because at the end of the day, we've even had like scholars and scientists that have yeah. looked at some of the things that uh -huh. they talked about in the Bible. And it's uh -huh. been historically proven that one Jesus did live. And even someone like the miracles and all that, they've been yeah. talked about and of yeah. big, big yeah. like, events have happened. You know, uh -huh. Even like the stuff of like Noah's Ark and um, yeah. stuff that happened in Egypt. Like, yeah. So then it's like, yeah, I really, I do know that, yeah, uh -huh. I can have my foundation of that. Historically, uh -huh. yeah, Jesus, you know. Oh, no, we, we accept Jesus existed. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm we accept that, that there's, no, no, we no, accept the miracles, we accept yeah. the no. But I'm talking about the Bible itself. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it is authentic, reliable, that it can be traced back to Moses, David, yeah. Jesus? Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Okay. I believe because for us, you know, we believe that Jesus was given a scripture. Yeah. But we believe the 27 books yeah. of the New Testament were written after him. Yeah, yeah. And they have contradictions in them. Well, in the uh, New Testament? Like in the gospel, the four gospels themselves. Like you mentioned about Jesus' pre-existence. But you know, this pre-existence only, only appears in the gospel of John. That's all the, it doesn't appear in Mark. It doesn't appear in... Uh, Matthew, it doesn't appear in Luke, which were written earlier. So, if you, if you, if you read from Mark, which the biblical scholars say is the first one written, the first thing that happens is Jesus, he comes, and John the Baptist comes from the wilderness, and he's baptizing with a baptism for forgiveness of sins and repentance. And then he baptizes Jesus for forgiveness and sins and repentance which is quite problematic for the Christian world. So, but then there is, a, you know, the dove comes, Jesus in the water, and there's a voice from the heaven yeah. saying that you are my son. Yeah. So Jesus, in the, according to the Gospel of Matthew, this is the first incident when he's called the son of God. Okay. When you read uh, Matthew, Matthew takes this story, but before it, he mentions the virgin birth and the announcement of Jesus is going to be born as a virgin, etc. So the fact that he's a son of God in Matthew and Luke takes place at birth. That's when we first hear about Jesus and that he's a son of God. But when you come to John, which is written later, then you have a pre-existent Jesus. So here you have a difference between them. I don't know if you ever, so John being written much later, it has a lot of things which the other they call it synoptic gospels that they don't have. Yeah. Like, you know all the I am statements? Yeah. I'm the bread of life. Yeah. I am the, the way, the truth, the light. No yeah. one will come to the Father except for me. Yeah. Before Abraham, I am. Yeah. And also statements like, um, you know about the necessity of being born again for Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. And also that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. You know, John 3.16. These statements don't appear in any of the earlier gospels. So what this would mean is that either the early gospel writers were not aware of these incidents, they were not aware of these statements, which are very powerful, fundamental foundations of Christianity, that they weren't aware of them, or they were aware of them but they chose not to write them, or that John is adding things to the story of Jesus. Like if, if, I, if I give a, another example, in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Matthew, the, the author of Matthew mentions something which is not mentioned in any other gospel. He mentions the fact that you know Herod. Herod has a, a dream or a vision that the child is going to be born in Bethlehem from the children of Israel who's going to destroy him. So he sets about to kill all of the children born, all the, all the male children born. So Mary and Joseph, they take uh, Jesus to Egypt and then when they hear the death of Herod he comes out of uh, they come out of uh, Egypt to return back to Jerusalem Galilee etc Paul uh, Ma the author of Matthew said something he said and this is all this is an order to fulfill what has been written that out of Egypt I will call my son so Matthew was saying that this is a, a prophecy from the Old Testament informing us about Jesus <laughs> which obviously encourages Christians in their belief. 
The problem is when you go back to the Old Testament, if you go back to Hosea, should we go underneath there? Yeah, that's what I was going to do. So, when you go back to Hosea, yeah. chapter 11. No problem. No problem. Right, uh, I'll put it here. When you go back to Hosea, chapter 11, verse 1, yeah. it mentions that the children of Israel are my, is my son. And out of Egypt, I took them. And then after taking them out of Egypt, they began to worship false gods. You can read it, from, this is paraphrased, but Hosea uh, chapter 11, verse 1 and downwards. So here, Hosea is talking about the children of Israel being the son of God, being taken out of Egypt when Moses took them out from uh, under slavery from Pharaoh. But Matthew has said that this is referring to Jesus, which is a misuse of the text. So there's, there's a number of, of these places which occur that show that this, this cannot be from, from God. So we would say because these books were written after Jesus, and even the authors we don't know, like we know for example in the New Testament, you know there's 13 letters attributed to Paul. Yeah. Paul who never met Jesus, he said that I never learned from the, the followers of Jesus, everything which I, which I teach you I, I learned it from Jesus. You know, seven of the letters, scholars say, agree that it's from Paul. Six of the letters there, there is discussion. Three of them, they say definitely it's not from Paul. Three of them, there's discussion amongst the scholars. But then the, the Gospels themselves, Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, biblical scholars will say that the names were never attached to them in the time, of, in the time when they were written. In the time of Irenaeus, like a hundred years later, this is when the first names were given. So there's a lot of... Um, because most people, they, they read all of the, they have in their mind all of the stories of Jesus together and they take it from various Gospels, but they don't realize there's difference amongst them. Like for example, according to the Synoptic Gospels, all of the disciples of Jesus, when he was crucified, they fled. No one was there or they saw from a distance. But when you come to the Gospel according to John, the beloved disciple was there, present, talking to Jesus when he's on the cross. Mary was there, the mother of Jesus was talking. So there's a contradiction, there's a change in the story. In the Synoptic Gospels, uh, Simon of Cyrene, he carries the cross. Some Christian uh, sects, early sects, they said that Simon was killed instead of Jesus. So John addresses this by, he doesn't mention, he mentions that Jesus only himself carried the cross. There's no Simon of Cyrene carrying the cross. So you can see there's changes. So the thing is, the idea of um, basing your foundation on a book which we don't know who the authors are or we don't know how it's reached us and there's discrepancy amongst it. We, we would say this is why Allah out of his mercy sent another messenger who came around 600 years later, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him with the Quran and the Quran makes these things very clear like Quran uh, chapter 4 verse 157 it says yeah. they, they did not kill him they did not crucify him but rather the likeness of him of him or sorry or rather it appeared so to them so some people they imagined that Jesus was killed but he wasn't crucified because the the concept we believe in God who's you know the most merciful the most kind, the most forgiving, the almighty. And we believe that all of us, we have a relationship with, with God. We can worship him directly. We don't need an intermediary. And all of us, obviously, we commit sins. But as Muslims, or Islam teaches that when a person commits a sin, they should hasten to seek forgiveness from, from God, from Allah directly. They should seek repentance from him. And if they are, they're sincere and they turn to him, they will be forgiven. We don't believe that, that God had to come down in the form of a man and die for our sins. Because this, this is a form of human sacrifice and also it's actually someone else taking the burden of our sins upon them, who's an innocent person. And it goes back to you know the concept of Adam. We, we believe Adam and Eve, our parents, we believe that Adam and Eve, you know, they disobeyed God by eating from the, the tree. But we, according to Quran, they repented. They sought forgiveness from, the, from Allah and they were forgiven. We don't believe that every child is born with original sin. So the, the foundation of Jesus dying on the cross is that every child has a sin from our father, which we never committed, but we're born with that sin. 
And then Jesus, he is the one who will remove that sin from us by bearing all of the burden of our sins and the original sin on him. So we would say that this concept itself is, is, is unjust and unbefitting of, of God. How does that sound? I mean, it's a lot to take in, but I'll definitely continue to look into it. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Do you have any other questions or anything on your mind or? Uh, no, to be honest, no. Okay. Just, um, you can stop me at any time because I, I can go on for a long time, but just something. The fact, the reality that, okay, Jesus was sent or Jesus was on the earth and then 600 years later, a man came in the Arabian Peninsula known as Muhammad, the son of Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi peace and blessings to Allah be upon him, he came and he made a claim. He, he claimed that he is the last messenger. He claimed that he was sent by, by God, by Allah. He claimed that he received revelation, the Quran. He claimed that it's upon all mankind to accept him. He claimed that the, the Jews and the Christians have gone astray and they have to accept his message. And with this call, uh, his life was 23, sorry, he died at 63. He received prophethood at 40, but he lived on the earth as a prophet for 23 years. Before dying, the whole of the Arabian Peninsula came under Islam. After he passed away, his followers, the, the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, collapsed. The Persian Empire collapsed. Islam conquered all of these lands. So the... Wa alaykum salam. Aywa. Allah help us. So... Uh, inshallah. So the, the thing is, this person came and then his, his... The book he has, the Quran, we will say that it's been preserved. His teaching covers every single aspect of life and he's been preserved. Does this not like put a question in your mind like, who is this man? I need to know. Or can you just say that I, I'm born a Christian, I'm in a Christian family, I'll, I'll just... No, I, just that's the thing. I don't believe in just because you're born into a Christian yeah, family. Yeah. Into a yeah. I feel like if any religion anywhere, I feel like it's up to us to go and search yeah. what it is that we believe in. So. Yeah. But has it, has it come in like, I, I need to know who this man is? Because he, he's claiming that he's come with the same religion as Jesus yeah. and Moses. He's claiming that he has the true version of the religion of Jesus and Moses. He's saying that, the, that Jesus is not God, that Jesus is not part of the Trinity, that Jesus did not die for sins. And it would appear from his uh, humble, simple beginnings that he was given victory and success to the point that Islam is... I would say is the, you know, I mentioned in Quran, uh, chapter 61, It mentions that he, God, is the one who has sent his messenger with the guidance and the true religion to make it dominant over all other ways of life, even if the idol worshippers hate it. So we would say that this took place. Islam became dominant. It conquered the whole Arabian Peninsula. It conquered the, the two major superpowers, the Persians and the Byzantine. Uh, the Islamic Empire spread from Morocco into China under one rulership. And even though because of our shortcomings, uh, some of the power and authority has gone, Islam is still the most practiced and the most followed and the fastest religion uh, spreading in the world today. Would that not indicate that there has to be some, some truth, or it, it is the truth? I mean, it's something that I have to go and continue researching because I'm very new to it. Okay, you know, no problem. Like, after hearing your words, I will look into it. I will no problem. But, yeah, can, I give, can I give you something to read, like a Quran and some leaflets? Oh, you gave me a leaflet here. Oh, I want Abdullah. Abdullah, can you get a bag? I'll just get a bag and then we're here every Saturday. If you have any questions, any comments, yeah. any comebacks, you're, you're welcome. Or keep talking to your friends, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, alhamdulillah. Do you have any like, social media? Like, do you guys run any? Like... Um, yeah. So, yeah, these brothers, most of the talks are recorded. Yeah. So, like, they have. Um, I think if you, if you just type Stratford Islam or Stratford Dawah, then you'll get these brothers' channels. So, and it will have some of our conversations, it will have the speaker's corner and I think it will, it will have links to other 
Islamic websites, inshallah. Okay, no problem. Thank you for your time. All the best. Okay, take care.